The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before the dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him in pursuit, Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose I have come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Samuel, who we find here on our Old Testament reading, becomes a great prophet and he gets his start as a t at a time when the scriptures say revelation, revelation of the Lord was uncommon and visions infrequent. In other words, people were not open to what God was saying. They had no taste for him no desire, and perhaps no tolerance. And yet the prophet Joel 200 years earlier would say this, it shall be a time to pass when I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Amos would later say, the prophet Amos, God does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. In other words, Amos is saying not everybody listens to God, but the ones who do are going to hear from him. And so we could say by looking at this passage that the first thing that Samuel understood about prophecy was he had to listen, not talk. And so one could say that prophecy begins by hearing God, not by making up stories or telling what you think is the future. But prophecy begins by a posture of listening to God. In the Acts of the Apostles, after going through a time of quiet in the cynical room after Jesus' ascension, days and weeks pass. The apostles are gathered in an upper room, frightened. And yet, they're spending their time caring for each other in charity, loving each other, and listening. They're not hearing right away, but their ears are open. It's the desire, that open ear, theoretically, is, is a desire to want to hear what God has to say over my own thoughts and my own voice. And so in the, in the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, 
immediately after the Holy Spirit falls upon them, Peter heard. And, it st and he stands up and he gives a speech, a homily, you could say, where thousands experience the power of God in their lives and the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Peter would say that this gift of the Holy Spirit would be for you and for your children still far off. That's all of us here. And so the Lord is calling us and we're the, we have this gift of prophecy if you were baptized. And I, I look at the scriptures and I say, I say to myself, baptizing all flesh, uh, the, the spirit coming upon all flesh, prophecy for all f flesh, that's because we're one with Jesus Christ. He gives us the gift of prophecy. But first we must begin by listening. And so Samuel says finally in answer, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. He also consults with Eli, an elder, because Samuel wants to make sure he's hearing the right thing. He's not listening to something else. And so Samuel begins by nurturing this, this gift of prayer through counsel. We're told that he sleeps in the temple, obviously he's spending lots of time praying. And these are, this is how the gift of prophecy within you, you that was given at baptism is nurtured. And so we pray primarily to listen. We consult elders. We look at scripture and we're attentive to the Ten Commandments. If I'm hearing if I, or having thoughts or hearing things from other people or I think I'm hearing from God and it violates the Ten Commandments, that's a deception. It doesn't mean you're bad. It means that sometimes there are other voices trying to convince us of the wrong thing. Living in a sacramental life is also key to this. The more deeply we're in touch with the Eucharist, faithful to the Eucharist, the more Christ increases in us and we become more, have more facility at hearing him because we're one and the same. We're bonded to Christ. He in me, I in him. The gift of prophecy should also prompt us to be living a virtuous life. In other words, a life that reflects the goodness and the beauty of Jesus Christ. A life that reflects the goodness and beauty of what it is to care for other people. The life of goodness and beauty that does not look like the world, but that looks like Christ. Virtuous living is doing the right thing according to what you hear from God. And it's not always a subjective hearing, especially when you look at Scripture, when you look at the Ten Commandments, when you look at what the church teaches. It's laid out very plainly. And so, obviously, in his time in the temple, Samuel learned to study. And this is why it becomes important for us to maintain an understanding of our faith and seek to probe more deeply into it. The gift, of pro the gift of prophecy is given to us. Whether you use it is up to you. You see, one of the big things that, that fortifies Jesus, we're told here, he go after doing many miracles, he goes off and he prays. Because after everything he's done, he has to make sure he's not only concerned with himself, but with the will of the Father. So he takes off to a lonely place to pray. Him and his daddy chat. And his daddy gives him instructions for the next town. In the same way, when we come before him, 
and take the time in prayer and open to hearing him, we will receive inspirations that will lead us and guide us to be prophets, not necessarily by what we say, but the loudest prophetic voice is how we live, especially as we live in the life of Jesus Christ, who must increase while we decrease. Regina Jenny, 